Thank you for the video about blasphemy, but I'm nervous I've offended that sin. But in brief, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is to take the works of God and assign them to Satan. To say, say Satan is the one who did all these things, not God in my heart and life, right? That's the idea, okay? And so, it is to radically flip good into evil, right? God is good, Satan is evil. It's to radically flip those ideas. It's to call good evil and evil good. I don't know if you guys know the story, but I've been reading a audiobook. Helter Skelter. I don't know if you guys have seen that one, but that's all about... These Charlie Manson murders. And all of his followers called him Jesus. Okay? He had, a, he had a family. And all his family sticks around on his little compound. Up to 100 people at times. But the inner circle maybe about 20. But they had a whole family gathered around him. And they all called Charlie Jesus. They all called him Jesus. And here's the idea. Charlie told them to kill to murder, to go out and wreak havoc, to do all of these evil things, and they all called him Jesus. That's kind of what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit looks like. Cal Magic says, read Helter Skelter a while back. There you go. It's a crazy book. It's insane. They did all sorts of wild stuff. And the whole time, saying, Charlie is Jesus and we're going to do all these awesome things in his name and all this type of stuff. And it was straight evil stuff. If anything is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, it looks like that. You see what I mean? It's to attribute acts that couldn't be more evil to God and be like, yeah, that's God who does that. Or the flip, right? Excuse me, to look at acts of pure good out in the world by the Holy Spirit and to say, oh, that's Satan. That's evil, right? It's once your morality is so flipped that you're calling good evil and evil good, that's when you're a state uh, in a state of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That's the idea. That's the idea. One of the marks of the Holy Spirit working on your heart in your life is you being nervous or worried about your sin. Okay? Those who don't care about their sin, they sin willy-nilly. No worries. Doesn't bother them at all. That's an indication that there's no Holy Spirit in their heart and life. Let me show you a verse. There's a passage here. Let's see it. John 16, 8. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Now, you told me, four caps, you told me that you think you might have committed blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me read you what the Holy Spirit does. But now I am going to him who sent me. Jesus is saying he's going to the Father. Okay. Now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, that is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So here's this point. I'm going back to the Father. If I didn't go to the Father, the Holy Spirit wouldn't come because I would still be here. But since I'm leaving, now the Holy Spirit will come. That's to your advantage. You want the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's what he's saying. Then what does he say in verse 8? When he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. Let me ask you a question, four caps. Are you concerned about sin, righteousness, and judgment? Okay, four caps says yes. Four caps is saying they're concerned about sin, righteousness, and judgment. And what does Jesus say about these ideas? Sin, righteousness, and judgment come from the helper. That is the Holy Spirit. Conviction about these ideas comes from him. Now, four caps is concerned that they've committed the unforgivable sin. They think the unforgivable sin has been committed by them. That is the sin that says... They have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. But here's the whole point. If you tie these two ideas together, the Holy Spirit convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Here's the idea. If you've blasphemed the Holy Spirit, he's not going to come and convict you. He's going to move along and do his own thing. So, four caps. The fact that you are worried about this 
demonstrates, I don't want to say it confirms, but it demonstrates or hints at the idea that you haven't committed the unforgivable sin. Because otherwise you wouldn't be worried about these ideas. People who have blasphemed the helper, the Holy Spirit, are not convicted over sin, righteousness, and judgment. They just don't care. I'm sure you've met people like that in your life. Ah, no big deal. It doesn't bother me. I'll do whatever I want. I'll live how I feel, right? That idea is the concept behind blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And so if you are still concerned about sin, righteousness, and judgment, that is a demonstration of the fact that the Holy Spirit is at work in your life, and so you can still be saved. What should your response be? Repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus. That should be your response. Yep, very important. So here's what I want you to know, Caps, all right? I don't want to have just alleviated your bad feelings and for you to kind of go on and just be like, oh, okay, Pastor Tanner said I'm good. I want you now to take this as a step forward in your walk. Okay, I was nervous that I'd committed the unforgivable sin and now I was nervous that I couldn't even be saved and it made me feel scared, okay? Now, hopefully, by going through the scriptures, it wasn't just my opinion, but the Holy Spirit convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. You said, I still have those concerns in my life. That's good. That's evidence of the Holy Spirit. Fantastic. But now I want you to take that and go a step further. I don't want you to walk away and just go, oh, well, I haven't committed the unforgivable sin. I'm good to go. I want you to walk away and go, oh, God hasn't rejected me entirely. God hasn't thrown me out the window. God hasn't abandoned me. Wow, that's amazing. How much more now should I serve and follow him? That's what I want you to think about, okay?